good afternoon ma'am uh, we welcome you here for this uh, fam lecture series that is going on uh, dear students we have with us our senior faculty dr adyasha das uh, ma'am is from iittm bhubaneswar center and uh, the topic that she'll be sharing today is understanding the future human resources in tourism and travel so listen to her carefully because uh, she is talking something about you people only you people are the ones who are supposed to be the human resource for future so uh, shall we start ma'am sure absolutely please ma'am please thank you very much rana for the introduction and uh, we will start off um, i have something here it's loud it's we are like it's little difficult to hear you a little loud please louder louder okay can you hear now yes ma'am yes yeah. possible okay yeah so very good afternoon to all of you present here i know this is the last uh, session of the day and uh, this is exactly that part of the day when the mind doesn't listen to words so that is why what i have tried to do is i have put together some words and few pictures and i have made it a very easy session for you because in the coming two years for the mba and three years for the bba basically what you will be doing is you will be doing the topic that we are discussing today that is human resources who are the people who constitute the human resources and what is human resource management and how does it become very important in the field of tourism and travel we will try to see that a bit now you may ask me why have i named it like this understanding the future human resources in tourism and travel because see if we are talking about your career now why are you here of course you know we have met uh, earlier at for the inaugural session and we spoke a lot about people coming to do their studies because they are thinking about a career they are thinking about a future so when you move ahead and you are talking about a career you must understand that the career is not a stand alone thing it is affected by several things and at the crux of your career you stand the institute plays a role the economy plays a role the external and internal environments play a role but what plays the crucial role is the person himself so how does this person change or transform in order to become market friendly basically we will have a short discussion about that but the caption here says that you have to understand who the human is now we have two papers one is human resource management the other one is organizational behavior so in organizational behavior we talk about the personality so we have a person every person who has certain talents these talents have to be polished made professional and who should be made market ready why do you need to do that because you have we have to understand how the future is changing so there are several interesting things that are happening you people have joined iittm at a time when uh, we are at crossroads because of covid because of the pandemic scenario so how is human resource being rewritten we will have a look at that a little bit of that but like i said you know i'm not going to make it extremely complicated and it should be good enough for you to follow so now let us look at this as you can see now if i ask you what is this and we can we have a little bit of answer here can you unmute yourself and tell me what is this can you hear me uh yes ma'am you are audible yeah i'm audible okay yes, so anyway, let me tell you that basically today you will come across a term in organizations and especially in travel and tourism organizations called team okay so earlier we had the individual who was playing and today we have the team and when this picture is a picture of synergy where you are coming together uh, and meeting people from various backgrounds from different cultures uh, with different upbringings with different educational uh, you know backgrounds and you come together meet in one organization and you start working so when people meet when cultures meet what happens do they collide do they have accidents or is it very peaceful coexistence what exactly happens 
that is basically what we are going to unravel in this very interesting uh, arena of human resource management in tourism. So as you can see in the slides that I'm sharing, what is, if we are trying to understand what is human resource management in general and what is human resource management in tourism, uh, let us try to, uh, you know, just let me have a look at it. One second. Yeah. In order to gain competitive power for the tourism and travel industry, human resource management is an elementary issue. So now you probably, you know, many of you before you joined IITJ, you have Googled and you have found out which are the top ranking companies in tourism. You also have heard a lot about startups. I think many of our, uh, you know, students, your alumni are now heading very important organizations in travel and tourism. They are also owning startups. They are the proud recruiters of our campus. So when we are talking about all this, you know that travel and tourism is a very crowded uh, arena. There are n number of organizations. You can start your travel company from home. You can have a you know multinational uh, human resource organization in travel and tourism, and uh, that basically means that there is tremendous competition. And I think you know if we have the world as our map. How much competition there is among countries, among destinations, uh, for tourists, for luring tourists, or for inviting tourists, or attracting tourists. Attracting is a better word for attracting tourists. The basic answer, the key answer to all this is human resource management. I think thousand times you have heard that this is a service industry, so it is the touch, the human touch, the personal touch that makes a lot of difference. So when we are talking about human resource management, we are talking about you. We are talking about the BPA students, the MBA students, all the students who came before you, all the students who are there in this batch, and all those who are yet to come. How they can chart the future of a destination, the future of a state, and the future of a country. So human resource management can definitely be regarded as the foundation. You have to be a cutting edge organization. If you have to be a leader in the forefront, if you have to fight the battle from the front, then your people have to be good. Your people have to be talented. More important, they have to be skilled and trained. I think you've earlier had sessions in which our very renowned professors, experienced professors have already told you about the tourism industry. They have also briefed you about skill, the area of skill and talent and how we can uh, polish talent and then acquire talent. So all this comes into the purview of human resource management, where we basically bring in raw material. And then what we try to do is we uh, um, train you and we try to put you, uh, you know, on the right track so that professionally you can, uh, you know, be on the lookout for a job that matches your profile. We will come to the job also are the backbone of the tourism industry. So you call, you whether you name a travel organization, whether it is tour operations, you're going out somewhere, you have a guide, you have an escort, whether you are uh, going to book tickets, whether you're booking from Fargo, you name it, anywhere across this industry, your interface is with the person. So human resource management is here to stay. It always has been the backbone of travel and tourism. So the importance of human resource management in tourism is unquestioned. Uh, this is something a little, you know, thought provoking for you. Human resource management in short can be called HRM and, or HR. And I, I found this uh, somewhere in Pinterest. I think HR is the unofficial psychologist, event planner, peacemaker, lawyer, and teacher. Now why I got this here is because uh, human resource management is a huge umbrella under which several functions come. These are called the functional areas of human resource management. Of course, if we look at the traditional functional areas, then we come to uh, first is human resource planning. Every organization, now you must be wondering, why is it that placements are not happening now? You know, this year, the travel and tourism industry has faced a setback thanks to the pandemic scenario. Before that, it has also happened several times, like in SARS and other epidemics that have happened, and it may happen in the future also. But there is one aspect of the travel and tourism industry which we should not underestimate, and that is the resilience of the travel and tourism industry in getting back. 
setbacks have come and they have brought back. So when you are in human resource, the first thing you do is plan how many people are available in the organization, what is the overall goal and function of the organization right now, how many do you need in the future. Immediately after that, you go to another area which is extremely important for you. Mostly people have come to an organization and during counseling, I think many times I have been asked, what is the placement percentage? So the next important function of human resource management is called recruitment and selection. So this question of placement that you're asking is, when you two years down the line or three years down the line, when you're sitting before the interview board, what they are basically doing is they're trying to find the right person for the right job. And you know, believe me, this is an extremely tough job. Finding the right person for the right job uh, often does not happen. We find the uh, square pegs in round holes. Okay, the exact typical profile that someone wants may not be there. But what we do is in your two years, three years uh, tenure here, we try to polish you. We try to give you the components which the market is wanting. We have several functions and processes in the organization which helps you to do that. And that in turn leads you to the right kind of a job profile. But every organization here definitely has this in mind that they need the right person. And as you do these papers, human resource management is a paper in your course, you will get to know the nitty gritties of how this happens. Immediately with recruitment and selection, you have another very important uh, function of human resource management called training. Now, many of you here, do you know that, you know, I come to soft skills, but do you know what matters? You know, someone was once asked, tell me three things that bring success in the travel and tourism industry for uh, an employee, for a prospective employee. And the person answered, the three things are communication, communication, and communication. So let us now evaluate ourselves. And I'm sure many of you will feel that probably you could brush up your communication skills a bit and make it better. And of course, we are completely hopeful because we have seen many such situations where people come here, you know, learn, and then they go out, uh, you know, speaking extremely well. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you here is that the training aspect. Training inculcates in you a preparedness for the job outside. Training brings about required modifications and changes in your behavior to make you more suitable for the job that is available. This training may not only be skills, it can also be personality and attitudinal skills. Okay. After that, another very big question. How much salary do you pay? This is a million dollar question. When you have joined a course, you have so many things in mind. Which are the top bracket companies? How much do they pay? What is my profile? Where do I fit in? So compensation is the other very major aspect of human resource management. Let me tell you, the ball is just not on your court. The ball is also on the side of the organization. Today, the biggest problem companies and organizations are facing is people leaving, what, which is called job hopping. So how do we manage to keep people in the jobs? What motivates people? Among the various things that motivate people, one of the major things is called compensation or your salary package. So what kind of salary package is being given by in the contemporary scenario by other organizations, by the competitive organizations? All these things, you know, again, there are several techniques in which we calculate it. And so compensation is another important aspect. Given the traditional functions of human resource management, now let us look at this. HR is the unofficial psychologist. Now, what is psychology doing in human resource management? You must be thinking. Along with this, let me show you another slide. Please see this. Your career in travel and tourism industry goes hand in hand with HR. Okay? So why is it the psychologist? Because when you start working, you also have to take care of your feel good factor. In other words, the mind. I think many of you have heard a lot about stress. You know, 10 years, 15 years back, stress was not the menace that it is today. But then, you know, we have more ambitions. We want to achieve more in less time. We want to see the world. We want to travel everywhere. We have want to acquire products and things which we cannot afford. 
And so a whole lot of problems happen. We get stressed. It is human resource management which has very important tools like mentoring, counseling, and all this happens in the workplace. You know, at a certain stage in life, we do not like to share everything at home. You know, as young kids, when you start your course in uh, the different centers of uh, IIT, Tim, you may come across uh, problems, you may encounter problems, which sometimes may not be understood at home. So in organizations, you have uh, counselors, you have trained mentors. In IIT, Tim, you have your teachers. All of them are trained and all of them can take care of your mentoring, so you don't need to worry at all. You, have, you are in very good hands. But in our organizations, you have these counselors who take care of your mind, they take care of your problems, they counsel you. Human resource management is also the event planner, the peacemaker. Conflict is a very natural thing in organizations. It will crop up. Where five good people are there, conflict is bound to happen. Where two good people are there, conflict is bound to happen more. So you will encounter conflict some way or the other. But it is again human resource management that teaches you conflict resolution. There is no situation where you cannot have conflict. No, that is not normal, that is not human. Allow conflict to happen and let conflict be resolved. So you can see then that we have several functions in this you know, platform of human resource management where you have come to create your career, where you have come to make your career. So it is very, very important that you understand okay, that in a travel and tourism industry, where do I start? What is the middle point? Where do I end? Or in other words, what is the bottom line of the hierarchy? Is there a hierarchy at all in your organization? Because today you have various organizations that do not believe in the bureaucratic hierarchical structure. And how soon can I jump? All these questions constitute your career in travel and tourism industry. I must tell you that I'm sure in all centers like it happens in Bhubaneswar, we often have these uh, classroom seminars or webinars where we call in uh, the alumni from outside. So what they do is they share their uh, experiences, they share their story, okay? their own personal story about what happened to them when they went from here with the MBA degree from IIT and a job in their pocket. How was that job for them? Did they fit in well or did they need something else? And from there, where did they go and where they are now? Believe me, these are called the best practice methods and these help the students tremendously, much more than a book or much more than a teacher can because this is hands-on experience of your seniors from outside. But then, all said and done, we know now that human resource management is about managing the potential of the people and making them market friendly. We are now aware about what are some of the basic functions of human resource management. Now, I think my basic job should be to make you aware about what are some of the new trends that are happening in human resource management. I think you know human resource, travel and tourism, they are extremely dynamic fields. And they are constantly changing because uh, you, know, you uh, have uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, situational changes. Now, I think in the month of March, we had our placements. We placed all our students. All of them bid us goodbye and they went to join. Uh, very good propositions. Today, when we look at it, I think, uh, you know, many of the people who work through the government uh, setups, they are there. Few private organizations are there. Few others have asked students to join back after a few months. So you can see how different the scenario, all of a sudden it has happened. And now again, we are feeling positive because many organizations have called us and asked for students, which means the market probably is coming back or is planning to make a comeback because in six months time, travel is supposed to begin again. Travel has begun, but pleasure, leisure travel is you know, about to begin. So in this scenario, I think it will be very, very pertinent if we can see some of the long-term trends that are there in human resource management. The first is, and remember I'm talking about HRM in travel and tourism. Uh, the first point here is that we are looking at a transition or a movement from collective to personalized. And never before has this been more important than in travel and tourism. So you can see that earlier we spoke about uh, standard product for tourists. Now, when you start doing your course in uh, you know, IITTN, you will understand that uh, there are several forms of tourism. 
And earlier you had the standardized product which was sold to tourists, sightseeing or something like that. But today you name it, we have it in the sense that there are many special interest tourism forms that have come up. So more and more people are talking about their own needs. So travel and tourism has to shift from the collective to the niche segments. Okay, very niche segments. Like say, for example, music tourists or uh, literary tourists. You know, these are very, very small chunks of tourists. They're not very huge tourists like uh, sightseeing, uh, you know, bracket. So you will learn about one of the different segments. Second, from technology as nice to have to technology as a transformational driver. The example of that is this class. I believe me, I have never had the experience of doing a class over Zoom till the pandemic hit us. Till then, it was a good old physical class in which we could actually discipline students and ask them to you know, punish them. Uh, actually, I'm a very nice uh, kind of teacher, but sometimes I'm forced to punish uh, people uh, when they disturb the class. But then, technology was always the driver in tourism. Imagine sitting in India in one corner of Odisha and Bhubaneswar and selling a tour package to someone in California. This, this was only happening in the travel and tourism industry. But today, travel and tourism industry is majorly dependent upon technology. Forget about travel and tourism. Almost every industry today has been redefined and technology is here to stay. I'm sure all of you are examples of that because all of you are able to handle these different apps, right? Now then, let, let us look at the pace of the travel and tourism industry. From slow to fast to faster. So naturally, when we are the first statement that we say, earlier we were doing a namaste or a handshake and saying, how do you do? Today, it's like, good morning, am I audible? So naturally, you can see the speed is changing, right? From a very slow moving industry to fast and to a very, very fast industry, the movement, the speed has changed. Then we have another scenario where we are talking about prejudice and bias to evidence-based working based on solid analytics. This you will understand a bit more, you know, when we uh, do the human resource paper, but I will be showing you how analytics helps. You know, it means that you have evidence backing the behavior of employees. Why do people behave the way they do? The trick to controlling your employees or the trick to bringing out the most in your employees or the trick to leading an efficient and productive team is to have evidence about their work life. Not prejudice or bias, but evidence. Also something to interest you is that now gradually we are moving from the hierarchical organizations to transparent type of organizations. There is a teamwork everywhere, there's project work everywhere. Nature of work is changing, so the tourism and travel world that you are joining in will be a better working environment than it was earlier. From pleasing the boss to creating a meaningful employee experience. This brings us to a concept called impression management. I do not know how many of you have uh, come across this term, but you have definitely heard about personality development. Well, uh, the, that kind of plays a role in impression management. Impression management is managing your, the impression you have on others. This is a full-fledged curriculum that is offered in certain management institutes. So the kind of impact you have on others, the kind of image you create in the minds of others is not dependent on others, it is dependent on you. You are the sole authority of how people see you. Don't you think you would like to be seen in a good manner in your organization? To be having a good image in the mind of your boss and your employees? Well, we are talking about that here. Gone are the days of in the India, uh, in Indian English, we have a term called oiling, which actually, or buttering. But in uh, British English, we have a word called apple polishing, where we feel that if we praise the boss too much, we get a promotion or we get work done. No, pleasing the boss is an outdated concept. It's an old concept. It doesn't work anymore. What matters is a meaningful employee experience. The employer has to give you a good experience. You have to give a good experience to the employee. Fine, now that you know what are the long-term trends, let us look at some data. 
In 2020, this is you know, a study of, uh, conducted by Deloitte and uh, about emerging HR trends, and I've got this data from there. In 2020, HR managers need to anticipate the need for more soft skills training. I think I was just telling you a few minutes ago about uh, communication skills. Well, communication skill is not the only element in soft skills arena. There are several others which they have mentioned here. Number one is personality. The personality you carry. What kind of a personality is required in the work and do you carry that personality or not? Then you also have your uh, teamwork, creativity, interpersonal communication and time management. All these are soft skills in which you have to be really good in order to bring uh, you know, effective uh, teamwork in your organization. Now, uh, creativity at work or innovation at work is something which is being rewarded these days. Many, uh, you know, awards have been established which recognize creative travel and tourism inputs. UNWTO also gives it, several other bodies give it. They want to know what are the different new innovative ways in which travel and tourism can happen. And who is doing it is the human resource who is doing it. So that is something which is you know very, very important these days. That it's an old wine and new bottle, you can call it. But yes, the basic concepts remain the same, the basic environment remains the same, but we are packaging and repackaging constantly, and so we have to be creative and innovative in our approach. You have interpersonal communication, extremely important. As I told you, interpersonal communication can be between employer, employer, employee, employee employer, employee, and in all these typologies, there could be agreement, there could be disagreement. Agreement and disagreement is bound to happen, but along with that, there has to be negotiation also. You win some, you lose some. So the concept of this, again, also is very, very important in soft skills. And primarily what is important is time management. I think this is extremely crucial because in an in industry, in a service industry in which we are operating, in the travel and tourism industry, time is of paramount importance. When you're talking about people traveling, people traveling the world over to come to a destination to see something, time is crucially important. We move on now to, uh, you know, something which is very interesting and which fits into uh, our discussion today. This uh, paper was written by a theorist called Shalcross. You can read in the slide. Today's millennial. Okay, you people are the persons who represent the millennial. Today's millennials are traveling with a backpack full of apps. Every travel company today has a travel app. Every bank has an app. Every service that you want to do, uh, you want to procure has an app. So you have a backpack full of apps. The freedom of choice and the urge for a unique experience off the beaten track is the reason why tourism industry has to change. So what is he telling otherwise? That human resource management should bring about change. Tourism industry can only thrive if change is happening in it. No one will come, you know, if the same monotonous experience is repeated over and over again. Yes, there are loyal tourists who would like to visit a destination after many years again, but they would also like to see change reflected in it. That is why they have said off the beaten track travel, off the beaten track experience, or what is otherwise called authentic experience. And the millennials, that is the people, all of you, the you know, new generation, you want a bit of everything. And you want it now. And we are now gradually coming to the arena of social media. We are now in the age of Facebook and Insta. You not only want to go to a destination, you not only want your authentic experience, you want it the right manner, you also, also want your photo shoot with it. So that is why it is very, very important that if you want it, you must have an attitude that matches it. Shalkaras says that for you people to have the potential to be good human resource, you should have a dynamic attitude. Because the manner of working that is now popular among the millennials requires a very outgoing, uh, aggressive, and dynamic attitude to work. I was talking to you sometime back about analytics. And here I'm talking, referring, see, whatever I have shared with you today, 
about the emerging trends of human resource management, the modern trends of human resource management, is uh, data that has been provided by the Deloitte report on global human capital trends and what they found in it. And they found that 84% of the working executives, 84% of the employees regard people analytics as extremely important. So what is this? From tracking employee performance to measuring retention rates or training outcomes. Everything is documented. People analytics tools connect the dots between HR trends and financial performance. I just told you that instead of just having an undocumented version, everything here is documented. How you performed when you joined, what was your performance last year, what was your performance this year, what are your key performance areas, are you meeting the key performance areas, are you matching the goals, is there any deviation from it, etc. So people analytics is a new thing. Learning organizations are, again, another new thing that is happening. Uh, I was talking to you about social media and we will also come to that now very soon. Emphasis on soft skills, which I had said. Now, this picture, if you see, it is indicative of what is happening to the modern generation. You can see everyone has a phone, smartphone in their hand and probably they are connecting to something. So connectivity is the key word. Work from home is here to stay. All these new changes are now being built into the structure of Indian organizations. Work from home was a very common concept abroad. But till the pandemic, this was not there you know, as an option available in many organizations. After the pandemic, people have realized that work from home has to be you know, provided. There is no choice now. People cannot move out of their homes because of the unhealthy environment outside. So, working from home, several other, you know, trust, when you are saying working from home, you are actually trusting your employee at home. It's a very, very cementing factor in human resource management, trust. <clears throat> Back again to the emphasis on soft skills, as I have said. Uh, please look at this slide. A very interesting study which I have taken from Harvard Business Review states the percentages of what the employees value at work. Okay, the first is competitive compensation. Competitive compensation, compensation means salary or remuneration or what you get, the amount you get in exchange for the work you do in an organization. So when we are talking about competitive compensation, we mean to say that your salary package should be at par with what other players are given in the market. I think I've already told you that travel and tourism has a whole lot of compensation, a whole lot of competition. So what happens if your organization is giving you lesser, you don't want to stay there. You are going to look for a job that pays you more. If an organization is paying you more then maybe you would stay. But there are several other factors that work as well. Here you can see 66% of people feel salary makes a difference. 55% 50, of people feel bonus and merit-based rewards. Merit-based reward, very, very important. And the private sector, the corporate sector is very, very, uh, you know, clear about merit-based rewards. It is not time scale promotion or anything like that. It is purely merit-based rewards. Retirement plans. There are certain organizations which provide you very good retirement plans and these organizations are valued. People want to work in these organizations because at the end of the day when they retire, they have a very good retirement plan. Training programs. Now, uh, we have something called flexible work location. The number of people who have opted for that is uh, uh, not, uh, you know, a noticeable number. But then if that is repeated now, I think many people are going to in favor flexible work location. Vacation time. Look at all the percentages that are marked here. So you can see flexible schedule, up to date technology, workplace amenities, access to social media at work. Now, why we are saying at work? There are many organizations where you cannot access social media at work. Okay, and healthcare. However, there are also other factors here. Personal recognition from higher ups. This is extremely important. Every person feels 
that a recognition in the workplace makes a lot of difference. Motivation. Okay, tangible and intangible rewards that the organization gives you go a long way towards bringing about a change in your work style and ensuring productivity stays at a high level. So you can see from, you know, overall you can see that generally what are the things people value. Just wait, give yourself a few months of work and you'll see more of the, most of these things you value as well. Now before I move into the last few slides, I must tell you that definitely salary is important. Definitely rewards are important. But what also matters is the work culture. Because when you go back home at the end of the day, you don't want to be a battered and bruised person. You want to be a healthy person who can also give quality time to your family. So basically, uh, you know, I remember I had heard, uh, uh, I think, uh, Anil Lambani, who was the guest in one of the IIM passing out ceremonies, where he had spoken about this uh, work-life balance. Okay, the, the rubber ball concept that, you know, life has, uh, life is a game of, uh, you know, rubber balls. So you have a career, which is a rubber ball. You have wealth, which is a rubber ball. You have a friendship, which is a rubber ball. And then you have family, which is a glass ball. So I think you all know that when you are playing with uh, rubber balls, the ball falls and, you know, takes time to get up. Sometimes if the bounce is more, the ball gets up on, on its own. But if the glass ball falls, it falls and it cracks forever. So what they are basically trying to say is, you should not burn out while working. Work should be like play. You're working in such a pleasurable and satisfying manner that at the end of the day, you're also taking care of your family. Family is important as well. We move on to the, towards the end part of the program in which I would just like to you know, uh, bring to your mind two very important concepts. One is uh, among the various uh, you know, changes that are happening in the organization today, the first is mental health. The mental health of the people at work has uh, uh, become a very big uh, challenge for organizations today because I think the world over, people are worried about uh, you know, young uh, people who just call it quits or who do something drastic with, them, with themselves because the uh, you know, stress of the work, the pressure at work becomes too much to handle. Okay, because I think you know that work and personal life have to be ideally watertight compartments, but ideally they are not watertight compartments. One affects the other. And this becomes a very, very important part of that instrument of, uh, you know, human resource, which is called human resource interventions. Interventions refers to mentoring, counseling, several of transaction analysis is also there, where we try to understand the personality, the transactions of the person at work. So we, you know, we have had a discussion on human resource management today, which tells us that in the travel and tourism world, we have come to make a career in which we would like to find an organization which gives us the perfect setting for our talents, rewards us appropriately by giving us a commensurate salary package, also gives us a good work culture where we feel dynamic and creative to contribute our best. Now, while doing all this, we also have to keep in mind that we have we are individuals in our own right and we need to be treated with respect and dignity and if we are treated with respect and dignity then we our mental health is taken care the good care is taken of our mental health i will end by talking about a small case you know there is this gentleman in an advertising agency two cases actually Advertising, I'll come to your question. You know, if you have having questions in two minutes, I'll be wrapping up. Um, Ogilvy and Mathur, he, this boy is from Assam. He passes out from one of the premier IIMs and he goes and joins Ogilvy and Mathur as a copywriter in an advertising agency. Ogilvy and Mathur is one of the premier advertising agencies. He has a very, very great transformation in his lifestyle because now he parties a lot, he goes out a lot. Work is like undefined hours of work. And finally, one day, he just has a major heart stroke, which means your physical health is of crucial importance. And that is why today in the workplace, physical health is also being addressed. The 
The second thing that I would like to say is a person who, again, you know, has a very good track record, uh, joins a very good organization, and then in the first year does very well, second year does very well, third year gets a little bored, fourth year gets a little more bored, and by the fifth year, he loses all interest in work, becomes one of the poorest workers, and is finally asked to go. So there is something called remaining up to date. And there is also a term called professional obsolescence. Are we becoming obsolete at work? Are we becoming outdated at work? Again, it is the HR department which pulls out these people, tries to send them for training programs. In many organizations, there are concepts like mid-career training programs. So at the end of the day, I think we can safely assume that human resource management is that branch of travel and tourism which takes care of our personal and professional growth through a number of functional areas. And I would love to explore these areas later in the classrooms. I think I'm open now for questions. If you have any questions, let me see the chat box. Are you having any questions? Yes, ma'am. The questions are there in the chat box. If you can yeah, please I'm see, able to see it actually. Just a second. Yes. Let me okay, fine. Ma'am, yeah, one of the I questions. See. Now I can see. Now I can see. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Please check the yeah. chat box. So, so how is the? Uh, uh, okay, thanks for being able to follow the session. I'm glad you did it. Well, I I, I somehow missed all this. Okay. Um, <laughs> just a second. Let me read the questions. Which sector in tourism and travel pays highest, ma'am? I will certainly not answer that question now. You are in the induction session. Please uh, join the rest of the course and very soon you're going to find out. See, uh, whenever students ask me a question, which uh, area is the best ma'am, I'm going to specialize in that area. So forgetting one thing, that this answer should be yours. You are the person who can best answer which area you fit into. And for that, I think you need to give yourselves at least one semester. So don't be in a hurry. And come back to me with this question after a few days. Uh, please send WhatsApp links for BBA. Okay, this is for you, Ranu, I think. I have experience in human resource for 11 months. Will that help me in future after completing my MBA in tourism? It will help you if you want to create a career of, uh, for yourself in HR in travel and tourism industry. Uh, if you want to take up tour operations or some other area, then your human resource management experience may not really figure there. However, many of our students have gone ahead and joined the HR departments into the travel and tourism setups, and they are doing very well. They like it as well. If you are joining the HR department of any travel and tourism organization, definitely the ex experience will come in handy. Uh, let me move on to the which sector in tourism. Okay, this I've done. Um, how is the mental health of people in tourism industry? If you are talking about IIT team, great. But if you're talking about uh, other organizations, see, in pandemic now, people are facing problems. I already told you, many of our very good boys and girls are waiting at home today. They have not lost hope. They are not depressed. I'm glad to know that the boys and girls who study in IIT Jain are brave and courageous because they know that in December, in January, a whole lot of people are again going to start travel. We have already been contacted by a lot of people. So uh, the mental health of persons in travel and tourism in different destinations varies. It's a very general question. We cannot have a general answer to that. However, I would say that we are optimistic and we should always ideally advocate that people should hope for the best. Uh, am I through with the questions or we, as a part of MBA from tourism, you can get a job in HR or other. Yeah. Um, you know, I will just give you a small piece of advice. This is your induction. You are in a beautiful phase of your life. You have not yet discovered the rigors of the MBA course. And uh, you know, it's beautiful. You just sit and dream and listen to the induction. Don't think about jobs right now. Jobs are there. And the fact that you have cleared and got into IITJ means you will definitely get a job. So whether a job will be available for you or not, yes, it will be. I'm from technology background. I think I'm done with questions. Or should I take all of them? Uh, as I have uh, BTEC, do you think this will be a negative part? This is an interesting question. 
an engineer who has joined travel and tourism we need as many engineers who can join i just told you technology is the here to stay technology is now in the foreground so engineering knowledge in travel and tourism is welcome the other day i was talking to a consultant from kpmg who was speaking about submarine tourism so all engineers welcome aboard yeah i think uh, the uh, career opportunities abroad after mba uh, there are career opportunities abroad after uh, taking experience we can discuss about that later i think ranu i have done five answers yes ma'am <laughs> yes ma'am yes, ma you're done uh, ma'am thank you so much for such a precise and clear session um and uh, let's hope and assume that uh, soon we can have some more sessions with you the students of other centers gets to hear you bhuvneshwar will definitely be hearing you thank you so much ranu for you know, keeping on reminding me you know somehow you got to know i'm forgetful thank you so <laughs> no. much i i like the session because anyway the students were not disturbing they were muted 